yes students in the previous uh, session we have discussed about the one component uh, we have in fact completed two components right so in the previous thing we have completed about the decomposition right so we have already learnt about the first component that is nothing but productivity and this is the second component called decomposition we have studied about the factors affecting decomposition the various steps involved in the decomposition process all that we have understood and in today's session let's move on to the next component of any ecosystem called energy flow so when you look at this uh, subheading energy flow so obviously uh, you will get some thoughts about how energy flows in the ecosystem from one level of organisms to another level right so energy flow means one organism depends on the other organism right basically for nutrition when one organism feeds on the other organism so energy will be transmitted it will be transferred from the organism which is fed by the other right the organism which is fed by the other to the organism which is actually feeding on that organism right so this is how the energy flow takes place and energy flow any ecosystem for that matter it can be it can be aquatic ecosystem it can be terrestrial ecosystem right so it will be always unidirectional flow of energy that means it always flows in one direction from lower uh, level trophic level to the higher trophic level and never comes back in the opposite direction like for example if you consider a simple food chain of uh, the uh, our grazing food chain like for example grass grasshopper frog snake right or eagle e if you keep the eagle at the topmost position of this food chain can you expect the energy flowing from eagle back to grass grasses definitely it will not it is not going to happen so energy flows only in one direction that is from grass to eagle step by step so by crossing through all these organisms which are occupying at the different levels right so that means so this is all saying about what unidirectional flow of energy and see for any living organism for that matter and for whatever kind of energy that we find on the surface of the earth the main source of all energies is what is sun and uh, of course in uh, even mythologically also sun has been worshipped by many religions because of the same uh, uh, reason right so many religions they worship only sun and they do not worship any other god thinking that sun is the ultimate source of energy right and it is also true when you think uh, in the perspective of the nature so sun is the basic and the only source of energy and through which the producers who are the producers not the movie producers right producers of the earth food producers the plants they are going to draw the energy directly from the sun and again the energy in the producers will be drawn by the consumers right so never it goes back in the direction from consumers to producers and back to sun right never it will never go back like this it has to go in only in one direction that is why it is called as unidirectional flow of energy right so this is one thing and as i told you sun is the only source except there is always an exception in the nature except a few places or few habitats such as the deep thermal vents under the ocean right so deep thermal uh, vents why don't they depend upon the organisms living in that habitat why don't they depend upon the sunlight energy or the solar energy is because they will not get it they will not receive that uh, solar energy that is the main reason and what is the source of energy for themselves see these organisms which are residing in that particular habitat you have learnt about a particular kind of organisms if you if you could remember called chemoautotrophs right the autotrophs which are surviving in that habitat they are autotrophs but that means they have got the capacity to produce their own food and also this food can be provided to other consumers there but they will not be dependent upon the sunlight instead they will be dependent upon what the other chemicals they are going to degrade the organic molecules the chemical substances through which 
the metabolic body metabolic activities can be carried out right so that is one thing to be kept in mind that means though sunlight is the main source of energy for all the living beings except for one particular group of organisms which are res uh, residing in the the deep sea thermal vents and see when we see a lot of sunlight energy or sunlight falling onto the surface of the earth and we also know maybe you have learnt in your lower classes uh, in the lower standards uh, maybe you have studied about the global warming right and also greenhouse effect what is basically greenhouse effect greenhouse effect means a part of the sunlight that is coming or entering into the atmosphere will get reflected back right so and this itself will keep the uh, surface of the earth warmer of course we are going to learn about the greenhouse effect and global warming in the next chapter in detail for now you understand a part of the sunlight coming into the atmosphere of the earth will get reflected back into the space and uh, so this reflection goes on repeating repeating and that is how the surface of the earth remains warm right so why am i mentioning here uh, this is here here is see though the organisms actually the photosynthetically active uh, organisms or the autotrophs what we call they absorb the sunlight not the entire sunlight that is received by the surface of the earth only a small amount only a meager amount of sunlight is actually absorbed by those organisms which are involved in photosynthesis if you consider the amount of sunlight reaching the surface of the earth to be 100 percent bhoomi mele bilti rodo 100 percent niu tagondre sunlight na adralli hardly around 2 to 10 percent it is less than 50 percent generally heluvaga but if you consider plants for that matter plants matra autotrophic anta niu tagondre then only around 2 to 10 percent of the total solar uh, energy will be utilized for the process of photosynthesis andre the total energy production or total bio mass production in the living world is dependent only upon this meager amount of solar energy and you can think how huge the amount of energy that is actually the earth is receiving and definitely we can if uh, by the intelligence of, uh, of human beings definitely we can make use of uh, this energy in a more productive way so why am, why am i mentioning here it is less than 50 percent because it is not only the plants that are involved in the process of photosynthesis there are also other organisms like bacteria or cyanobacteria you have learnt about right so these though they are not plants they are they are involved in the process of photosynthesis they also contribute uh, for the uh, uh, productivity on the surface of the earth and that is why generally that will be less than 50 percent which is also very less when compared to this so when we look at the different ecosystems see the rate of entropy see you must have th uh, studied the thermodynamical laws in the physics and chemistry so any ecosystem will definitely obey the law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics which says that the rate of entropy or disorderness goes on increasing right so as in uh, with the time that means it will never be constant the nature will be never constant it goes on changing it keeps on changing and it goes on disordering right that is what this means so second law what it says rate of entropy does not decrease over time but it increases and in order to cope up with this uh, increase in the increasing uh, uh, what disorderness or you can say increasing diversity uh, in fact if you talk with respect to biology then in order to cope up with that lot of energy is required for all these biotic components right and also to cope up with the abiotic components there and this energy this constant need of energy will be supplied by the producers by the synthesis of the molecules especially the biomolecules produced during the process of photosynthesis and this bigger amount of energy produced by the the producers the same amount of energy will be also transferred to the uh, consumers not you know that not all the organisms are uh, producers Nivu photosynthesis model. Do you photosynthesize? Definitely not. Right? So when you do not photosynthesize, but you still get the energy, it is directly or indirectly from the plant body. Right? So plant body energy, plant body tanu upyagus kondu, uliddana bereori kodbeku. Right? And it goes on like this. So plants mele manishari matradikara illa, other organisms also feed upon the plants. So and that herbivorous animal which is uh, feeding upon the plant will also be eaten by some other uh, animal, by some other animal. That means 
ಪ್ರತಿ ಎವ್ರಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ನೋಡುವಾಗ ನಮಗೆ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿಕ್ರೀಸಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದ ಥೀಮ್ ಇಯರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಫ್ಲೋ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಹೇಳಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಹೈಪೋಥಿಸೈಸ್ ದ ಫುಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲಿ ಹೈಪೋಥಿಸೈಸ್ ಅಂತ ಯಾಕೆ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದೆ ಫುಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಫುಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನರಿ ಇನ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೇಸಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಮೋರ್ ರಿಯಲಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಫುಡ್ ವೆಬ್ let us try and uh, understand what is food chain what is food web what is the difference between these two in this in this chapter little later see when we consider about the food chains and food web uh, with respect to the energy flow two main uh, themes or two main concepts or two main theories we need to remember here no energy that is trapped into an organism remains it uh, uh, remains there forever see any a level of organism it can be it can be a producer it can be a consumer it can be a primary consumer it can be a secondary or tertiary consumer yavade level of organism irabodu adu right adu thanu padkondiruvantaha energy enide biomass enide it will never be there constantly adhe level nalli shashvatavagi uliyodilla hagadre it may be taken away by the next level of organism or the organism in the same level will die and leave out its energy to the nature back that is how it is right no so this is one thing to be kept in mind no level of organisms will trap that amount of energy forever second thing when any organism dies and that is not the end again see that is why nature is nature is always uh, uh, what is constantly changing and it is always like uh, uh, you can compare the nature to the flowing of the river because see nature will never stop even uh, by the death of the organism also once again one more food chain will start there and that food chain we refer it to as detritus food chain because any organism if, if it dies there are so many other organisms which are in fact waiting for any animal to die there any organism to die there ಯಾವುದು ಒಂದು ಲೀಫ್ ಬೀಳ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಮರದಿಂದ ಸತ್ತು ಹೋಗಿದ್ದ ಲೀಫ್ ಆರ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅ ಡೆಡ್ ಎನಿಮಲ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಡಿಕಂಪೋಸರ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ವೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಫೀಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದಟ್ ಡೆಡ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅ ಫುಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಡೆತ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಟ್ರಿಸ್ ಡೆಟ್ರಿಟಸ್ ಫುಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ಆರ್ ಡೆಟ್ರಿಟಸ್ ಫುಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ವೆಬ್ so for that matter all animals they depend upon the plants directly or indirectly so that is why all animals they are heterotrophs or in other words they can be called as consumers here and so depending upon depending upon the be- uh, nutritional behavior of the organisms we can classify the organisms present on the earth into producers and consumers this is one wide uh, categorization ಒಂದು ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ಸ್ ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫೋಟೋ ಸಿಂಥಸೈಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫೋಟೋ ಸಿಂಥಸೈಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಫುಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗಿವ್ ದಟ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫುಡ್ ಟು ದ ಅದರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಗರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ವೇರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹೆಟರೋಟ್ರೋಫಿಕ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಫುಡ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ so they are collectively called as consumers otherly again there are different uh, stages here one is primary consumer primary consumers are the organisms which directly feed upon the plants that is why they are also called as herbivorous herbivorous animals or herbivores right so they are directly feeding upon the plants and those organisms those animals which feed upon those primary consumers so they can be called as secondary consumers or they are called as primary carnivores see primary consumers not to get confused confused maadkobedi primary consumers ge naavu herbivore anta karitheve illi secondary consumer andre the animal which feeds upon the primary consumer is called as secondary consumer and this is what is called as carnivores so in fact all these three are carnivores only so this is directly feeding upon the herbivore that is why we call it as primary carnivore and so again this primary carnivore will be eaten away by some other animal and that animal is called as tertiary consumer or secondary carnivore and similarly quaternary carnivore quaternary consumer and tertiary carnivores so these categories can be considered under the category of carnivores so like this herbivores and
two different types of food chains here. One is a grazing food chain or GFC and the Karitave, or the other one is a DFC, detritus food chain, right? GFC and DFC. So it is very uh, convincible, uh, convincing that uh, by looking at the heading itself, you can understand grazing food chain and Thelidre. It starts from the level of the plants or the producers, whereas this will start from the dead organisms. Right? When any organism dies, this food chain will start. Right? If a new life appears on the earth, especially plant life, then this food chain will start. So, begins with the plants or producers and this begins with the dead organic matter of any organism for that matter. Right? So, we are going to also, un we, we, are, we are going to understand the two food chains at the same time we also ha have, let us have the difference between the two here. So, it is made up of consumers, different levels of consumers we have already understood just in the previous slide, uh, primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers, right? They may be herbivorous or carnivorous animals. This is made up of, DFC is made up of decomposers. Here, the organisms, they are called as what? The animals, they are called as what? Consumers. Illian karitivi, decomposers on the karitivi. And again, decomposers is a very large term. It's a generalized term. In the decomposition activity, we have understood there are various events taking place, right? And different set of animals or organisms are involved in different activities. All of them are together called as what? Decomposers. So, I need not repeat the same thing. In the previous class, class we have already understood about decomposition, right? Now, see, these organisms coming under a GFC, they meet their energy or nutrient requirement by feeding directly or indirectly on the plants. So, when I say directly or indirectly, directly feeding means herbivores, indirectly means carnivores, maybe any level of carnivore it can be. But these, they meet their energy resources by feeding upon the dead organic matter, right? By breaking down the dead, dead organic matter, by decomposing the dead organic matter and thereby they will also receive the metabolic energy that they require for their own body. Consumers are identified under different levels and they are, they are called as trophic levels like primary, secondary, tertiary and so on. They are called as trophic levels. We will understand what is trophic level in the next slide. Here, these are organisms are also known as saprophytes. What is the meaning of saprophyte? Sapro means to decompose. Saprophytes are the organisms. Saprophytes basically fight, phyta, nimagotire, phyta stands for plants, right? So, sapro, saprotrophs and the helidre, these are the uh, group of organisms which are coming under that particular category which are feeding upon the dead and decaying matter and the bodu. Saprophytes and the right? So, they are the uh, organisms which feed upon dead organic matter coming from the plant source only. Sapro, saprotrophs means generalized term. Now, decomposers, they secrete digestive enzymes. We have already again taken this in the previous session. You know, uh, bacteria, irbodu, fungi, irbodu, they secrete certain types of enzymes. Right, hydrolytic enzymes and secrete matter, and these enzymes are going to degrade that organic matter into simpler inorganic nutrients or molecules, and these inorganic molecules will join again with the soil, and thus it can be once again reabsorbed by the plant body. But some of it will also be percolated with the water by dissolving in the water, it can be percolated into the deeper layers of the soil, and that may become what un unavailable nutrient. Right? So, like this, we will study these two uh, food chains. One is grazing food chain and the other is detritus food chain, GFC and DFC. So, in the aquatic ecosystem, GFC is a major conduit for energy flow. That means, in the aquatic ecosystem, why we, we are considering only GFC as the major conduit? Conduit means the conductive force, right? So, conduction, energy and the conduction model, energy flow model, the main source is what? GFC here. Why not DFC is because in the water, though it is the uh, microorganisms are present, they are not present basically in the aquatic medium there. They are present once again in the terrestrial medium. That means they are present below this, uh, uh, what is that aquatic uh, body, maybe a pond, maybe a ocean, maybe a lake, whatever it is. And once again, they are present in the soil. 
right so that is why it will not be accounted for uh, what aquatic medium so that is why the flow of energy can be well understood by studying gfc in the aquatic ecosystem right and if you consider the same thing in the terrestrial ecosystem major conduit for energy flow on the terrestrial ecosystem will be dfc because it is the soil which will be consisting of large amounts of numerous various kinds of microorganisms which are responsible for the activity of decomposition and largely this process takes place on the soil surface that is why dfc is the major uh, energy source on the surface of the land that is on the terrestrial surface right so but you cannot confine whenever if there if there is a detritus food chain is taking place or if there is a uh, grazing food chain is taking place you cannot confine that this food chain has to remain for itself and the dfc has to remain for itself ಎರಡು ಒಂದು ರೊಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಇಂಟ್ರಸೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಹೇಳಿಕ್ ಆಗುದಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ಹೈಪೋಥಿಸೈಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಫಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫೇಲ್ಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ಯಾಕೆ ನಾನು ಹೈಪೋಥಿಸ್ ಹೈಪೋಥೆಟಿಕ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಸಿ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫಂಗೈ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ವೇ ಬೈ ಸಮ್ ಹರ್ಬಿ ವರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಈಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಫಂಗೈ ಮಶ್ರೂಮ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಫಂಗೈ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫುಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಡಿ ಎಫ್ ಸಿ that means there is an inter uh, intersection between the dfc and gfc right that is why this concept of food chain will not hold good in all cases and that is why because of the intersection of the food chains they have come up ecologists have come up with a new concept called food web so what is food web basically food web means it is the natural interconnection of food chains food web is nothing but the natural interconnections of the food chains which make a web of organisms which are interdependent on each other so in this case one organism may be feeding upon various different organisms and those different organisms again they may be interdependent upon uh, for food maybe for any other uh, resources on various other different organisms right so that is why this will be called as a food web and one more important aspect when we talk about the food chain or food web is trophic level trophic level anta helidre see this is the level of the energy that means energy levels at the level of the producers and at the level of the primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer how the energy is going to vary based on that we have got different levels they are called as trophic levels so in order to understand just read out the definition here based on the source of their nutrition of our food so source of food the source of nutrition mele organisms they occupy different places in the ecosystem or in the food chain and that place occupied by any particular living organism will be called as a trophic level so for the for, for example you can consider these animals cockroaches crows tagolbodu right so there are certain uh, animals which neither come under completely herbivores nor under carnivores because they will be feeding upon both so they can be considered under what omnivores right mishrahari galu anta sasyahari mamsahari mattu mishrahari anta matte inondu barutte namalli alva so hage so trophic levels they are based on what the source of food that is actually acquired by the organism and also the level of energy conduit that is also one more thing here so different levels uh, we are going to come across in the in the chart we are going to study that producers belong to the first trophic level so you can you can also visualize that here so primary producers Th- this is the first trophic level so under this only photosynthetically active organisms only can be considered under this b- basically plants right phytoplanktons grasses trees and even the u bacteria or uh, cyanobacteria which are able to photosynthesize can be coming under this particular category primary consumer secondary trophic level this consists of only herbivores andre plant mele direct agi feed martiruvanta organisms anna matra hondiruvanta level idu that is called primary consumer level zooplanktons irabodu grasshoppers irabodu cows irabodu rabbit irabodu right so any anybody or any human being any animal which is completely purely vegetarian can be considered under the primary consumer level and those animals which are feeding upon these can be considered under the secondary consumer level or third trophic level 
ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ಬೇಡ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ರಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಫಿಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಸೊ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮತ್ತೆ ಬರುವಂಥದ್ದು ಅಲ್ವಾ ಸೊ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಯಾವ ಫೀಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ರಿ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇನ್ನು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ತೊಗೊಳ್ಬೋದು ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಬಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಸಾರಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ತೊಗೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ತೊಗೊಳ್ತೀರಿ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ತೊಗೊಳ್ತೀರಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ತೊಗೊಳ್ತೀರಿ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಫೀಡ್ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಯಾವ್ದು ತೊಗೊಳ್ಬೋದು ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಫೀಡ್ ಮಾಡುವಂಥದ್ದು ಯಾವ್ದು ತೊಗೊಳ್ಬೋದು ಮೇ ಬಿ ಸ್ನೇಕ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಫುಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಫುಡ್ ಚೈನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ the amount of energy see when we look at any food chain it can be gfc or dfc yavde food chain idru kuda one traffic level inda inon traffic level ge energy transfer aagbekadre energy will not be the same amount energy gets decreased from one level to another level and for any ecosystem for any food chain for that matter the energy will be decreased approximately by 10% and that is why we call it as a 10% law anta karitebe the transfer of energy follows 10% law that means only 10% of the energy is transferred to each trophic level to the next trophic level from lower trophic level to higher trophic level transfer aagtirbekadre only 10% of the energy will be transferred then where is the other 90% energy so it may be lost a part of that energy if you consider yavdo one level al organism ide anta helidre 100% energy anta you consider madidre aa 100% alli 10% matra next level ig hogutte hage 90% alli 90 in that 90% a part of the energy is utilized by the same organism which is actually holding it yes and the other amount of energy will be lost in the nature in the form of heat so you know that so no system is completely efficient so once again thermodynamics right so no system is completely efficient and the new kalti diri some amount of energy will be always lost right it will be always wasted that is what will be applied once again here right so one more concept here i told you energy can never be constant in any trophic level for a long duration but a uh, organism yavde trophic level iruvantaha organism na life span na base aadharada mele so for some time at least the energy will be constantly standing in that trophic level for example if a crow if it survives for 12 years anta you approximate madidre so maybe until it gets eaten away by some other big animal ಆ ಕಾಗೆಯನ್ನು ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ದೊಡ್ಡ ಅನಿಮಲ್ ತಿಂದು ಹಾಕೋವರೆಗೆ ಅಟ್ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಟಿಲ್ ದಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ರಾಪ್ ಈಚ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಮಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದರೆ ಇಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಮಾಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಅಟ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ರಾಪ್ ಎಟ್ ಎನಿ ಗಿವನ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ಸೊ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆರ್ ದ ಬಯೋಮಾಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ that is called in the trophic level that is what is called as standing crop so it is measured in terms of mass right or it can be measured in terms of energy per unit area on the forest consider madidre adralli total standing crop eshtide on the agricultural field consider madidre adralli total standing crop eshtide so it is depending upon the different trophic levels right so this is how we study about the biomass and the trophic levels and also the standing crop and also 10% law of flow of energy right so this is the last slide this is the last slide where we see the energy flow through different trophic levels that means there can be intersection of trophic levels also which can uh, contribute to the formation of a food web here so sun which is the major source of heat that is the major source of all the energies so this is the primary producer level or the you can say first trophic level so some amount of energy is lost in, in, in terms of heat and next level will get only 10% of energy and from this you can see this is where actually food chain gets deviated and it forms what food web